Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back for another track guide video. This week we'll find ourselves at Worldwide Technology Raceway, located in Madison, Illinois, just about on the state line. This track has had an oval since about the mid-90s, I think about 95, 96, and they've played host to tons of truck races over the years. However, this week is the first time that we ever get to see the cup cars race around here. Couple that with the fact that we've still got the new next-gen car that's being worked out, so new car and new track should be a pretty interesting weekend. If you are familiar with this track from racing some of the older oval content like the trucks, the Xfinity cars, or even the older cup stuff, you're going to have to throw a lot of what you know out the window. The next gen car at this track it drives completely different than those cars. But don't worry, we will get you up to speed by the end of this video and you'll be able to be competitive and have some good races. So. Let's go ahead and head down to the track and get started. Start off with some of the quick tips, basics about the track and car. So turn one actually has less banking in that very bottom lane that we were on. So if you get the entire car in that bottom lane, it's going to feel a lot tighter. If you accidentally straddle that bottom lane and then about a lane up where the banking starts to build, then the car can feel like it wants to snap loose on you really quick. So just be aware of that transition if you're going from the low banking to the high banking or vice versa. Next tip is don't fear the third gear. Going down into turn one, third gear is really helpful to get the car to actually rotate. It's possible to make fourth gear work, but I just, I was so much more consistent with third gear. The scary part is getting down into the corner and making sure that you time your downships right so that you don't spike the RPMs and get the car all out of whack. Okay, be aware that the transition in and out of the corner are really intense with this car, and they're very finicky. They don't look like they'd be that intense, but believe it or not, as you head into, into the corner, the track kind of angles up a little bit, and you'll go up a hill, and then when you turn into the corner, you actually travel back down that hill. With the older cup cars, that was okay. It kind of felt gradual. With these cars, it makes the car want to snap on you. And that's really a product of how these cars generate their downforce and their grip. It's also the reason why there hasn't been any A-fix guides lately, uh, because I had to completely retrain my brain to understand how to drive this car. And I think I'm finally getting there. It's definitely not perfect, but it's closer. And I think I have some stuff to actually share with you. Well, since I brought it up, let's go ahead and talk about the aero platform of the car since it's such an integral part of driving this thing. So we're taking a look at the car heading into turn three at speed. Take a note of where the Goodyear lettering is on the tire in relationship to the fender. So you can see it compress a little bit as we head up this hill. And then as we turn down into the corner, you'll see the car actually raise up just a little bit. And it's not much because these cars are set up pretty stiff and that is to control the aerodynamic platform. So because the airflow underneath the car is so important to how this car handles, they need to control that as much as possible. Okay, utilizing our world-class animation system here, <laughs> we're gonna show a little bit about how this works. The first thing to note is that air moving over top of the car actually pushes the car down into the track. Air that's traveling underneath the car works to push it upwards out of the track, and you don't want that. That's why older uh, NASCAR vehicles would seal the car off to the bottom of the racetrack. They wanted as little air as possible underneath the car because the more air they got underneath, the more it was trying to lift the car out of the racetrack, and that means less grip. So you don't want that. This new car, though, does some aerodynamic wizardry with the diffuser that they've talked about every week so far and kind of how the air flows underneath the car. So basically what happens is the air comes in from the front, that's this purple part of the arrow, and it gets squished as it travels underneath the car. So the more red that this arrow is down here, that means the air is moving faster underneath the car and it's getting rushed out. You might be familiar with this concept if you have ever put your thumb over the end of a water hose. You know, like you want to spray your buddy from further away, so you put your thumb over the end of the hose, and then now the water comes out even faster and it goes further. It's that same kind of concept. 
you have to add in that faster moving air produces less pressure. And that is the key to the grip of this car. If you get this car way low down to the racetrack and get this air as squished as you can, then the airflow rushes out and now you have more grip. However, like at Gateway and a lot of tracks, as the car compresses and rises up as it's going in and out of the corner, the ride height changes. You know, you've all you've all seen that. That's what we talked about a few minutes ago where the car kind of does this little number going in and out of the uh, turns. As the car is traveling down, like as right before it sets into the corner and the car rises up just a little bit like this, this arrow is now less red. This air is moving slower. It's making more pressure underneath the car and that is making you have less grip. Then as the car settles back down into the corner, our arrow turns red again and we have a lot of grip. So that is what contributes to this kind of weird snappy feeling. Because the cars are going so fast, this transition of the suspension happens really quickly and it gives that really snappy feeling. All right, the last two things I want to talk about before we get to the lap. I'm sorry, it feels like it's taken a while, but there's just so much to explain with this car, and it's hard to get it all out. Um, steering ratios. So, since the car kind of works different, it's got rack and pinion steering instead of the old style steering. It's very, very direct. You've probably noticed how it's really difficult to catch slides. So, I like to use the 2.08 box just because it feels like I can actually catch the car. If it gets sideways, I don't overcorrect quite as fast, so that's really helpful. Uh, the other thing to note is that the brakes in this car are wildly different than anything else that we're used to. Uh, the brakes are really good, which means they lock up really easily. And I noticed that with the default brake bias, uh, it's really easy to lock up the front tires just a little bit, and once you do, it's really challenging to get the car to cooperate again so it just wants to spear off into the wall so i've actually moved my brake bias back to 46.4 i think the default's 51.4 right now with this current setup and that just really does help you drive the car down into the corner a little better without as much risk of locking up the front tires uh, another consideration is if you have really any steering input while you're braking the tires just lock up so quick because you're unloading that left front tire and it just wants to lock up so try to do all of your braking in as straight of a line as possible and see if you can get some more speed out of the car that way all right wow if you're still here thank you very much and it's finally time for the lap All right, let's see if I can keep this guide under roughly 12 minutes. That way you can watch it on the toilet or while you're eating lunch or something and be done. It won't take up too much of your day. So getting up through the gears, I use the clutch quite a bit um, just because I have a habit of timing the shifts wrong and I don't want to miss a shift in the race or in here. So uh, starting our lap in fifth gear, we're going to get right up next to the wall and turn down on throttle. The car will rotate a bit in fifth gear. 
be very careful coming out so it doesn't snap. It's going to feel really light in the back end. Coming across the start finish line now. Spotting my break-in marker, which is exactly where the permanent wall ends and those temporary barricades begin. When I'm parallel to those, I get on the brakes. Hard on the brakes and I'm going to blip the throttle into fourth and then again into a third gear here in a second as I'm lightly easing off the brakes getting into the corner because like we talked about uh, there's a little bit less grip as the car is not planted into the track yet. I'm staying in the second lane so that I have a little bit more banking to work with and I'm having to use a good bit of steering with the 2.08 steering box. It does take a lot but it's not overturning the car. Uh, then get back to the throttle and beware because it's going to get pretty shifty on the way out. And then a quick upshift into fourth and then to fifth. Now your braking marker here is kind of hard to spot. You have to kind of get this on feel and visual reference. So I'm, I start braking at about three light poles away from the caution light. Braking lighter than we did into turn one, another blip into fourth gear. And you can really see that transition we were talking about earlier. That's why I use less brakes. Um, off off the brakes letting the car roll to the middle and then gassing it back up using fourth gear through here and then waiting just an extra second on your throttle you can let the car rotate more see it gets pretty loose coming out and you might even have to play with the throttle on the way out of the corner as you come over that last transition because the car is going to lose grip again right as you exit the corner so if it starts feeling too loose just come out of the throttle just a little bit and see if it'll hook back up if it doesn't then you might be in for a ride all right, everybody, there we have it. That is the end of another track guide video. So just beware of those transitions getting in and out of the corner and how they're gonna affect the aerodynamics of the car. Don't lock up those front tires on your braking zones and be safe and I'm sure you'll have good races. So hope everybody has a good week. Uh, thank you all for being here to watch these videos. I know it's been a while. I'm just gonna pretend like it's not it's been a long time. And we'll just go from there. So I'll see you guys all in the next video. Take care. Have a good one.